Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I am reading an excerpt out of my new book, Face Your Foe, on confronting the critics. This book was supposed to be out some years back. And finally, finally, the sister to Know Your Enemy, the Christian's critic, is released. I thank the Lord, because if it wasn't for him, there would be no book. I am in... The chapter, Overcoming Fear, Confronting the Foe, that is chapter five of Face Your Foe on Confronting the Critic. And I want to take you there because I believe that there are those who are having problems confronting their foes due to fear, due to frustration, due to the fact that some people just won't allow them to because they have their own fears because they have their own issues because they have their personal opinion or they believe that something might go down if you approach mama or daddy or cousin or sister or brother or manager or business owner or investor wait a minute hold up before you go over there and confront anyone on any matter You better pray. Others won't say that. They'll just say, don't go over there, start no mess. Others will just say, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. I mean, really, there's so many other things that's going on in the world. Just take it. You know, if she wants to get an attitude, so what? I mean, that's just who she is. Really? So that's what I'm supposed to do. Well, I think it's what's best. You see, some people who have their own vested interests and others who just want to appear like they're doing so well and they're advising others. And then there are those who really do mean well. The point is, is that there comes a point where you cannot just keep sweeping things under the rug. You cannot keep turning your back. You cannot keep saying that, oh, well, it's no big deal. And I mean, I know that I feel upset inside and I know that my stomach is, you know, turning every time I come around this person. And I know that my head feels like it's going to pop off, you know, but I'm just not going to say anything. Overcoming fear, confronting the foe. Chapter five, face your foe. On confronting the critic, please do get your copy of this book. I'm telling you, if you want to feel empowered, if you want to feel like it's time to just go ahead on and do what I need to do. And you need that motivation, then this is the book for you. This is the cheerleader for you. This is the friend that understands coming off the pages of this book. Make up in your mind you are going to confront a foe before you do it. But be sure God is indeed in the plan. It can be challenging thinking of ways to discuss a controversial matter with a loved one. You start to feel anxiety, worry, stress, and even anger within because you just don't want to have the talk. You might procrastinate or run away from what you are supposed to do by filling up your day with many activities just so that you don't have to put up with a foe. You probably even thought of putting someone else up to talking to that person instead of you. People with many personal grievances with others would be better off spending less time running from problems and more time addressing them. Taking a moment during the day to focus on how you plan to handle confrontations with certain family members and friends will help build confidence within. Provide personal peace, a sense of accomplishment, and possible resolve. But a phone call, text, email, or snail mail is doable. A mother must protect her children. A father must provide for his family. An employer must train workers. A teacher must instruct students. All people deal with their share of confrontation when someone forgets or refuses to do what is right. Thinking about your goal, dream, vision, objective prior to a confrontation will give you the motivation to get back into the ring with the enemy if you feel like you lost in the past with him or her. I have a family to feed, so what I need is for you. Uh, I can't allow this to keep going on. I have to take a stand on this issue. I will not tolerate And if it keeps happening, then you 
give me no choice but to you fill in the blanks by voicing your concerns rather than shouting them although that happens too no matter how badly an enemy might react your defending yourself is letting the listener know you are not weak you are capable of resisting the devil and the holy bible says he will flee too one day the enemy will get weary of fighting with you and will either submit leave you alone or launch a counter attack yet the point has been made you are after a response and even if the results aren't to your satisfaction doing something is better than doing nothing when god has given you the green light to do so however if you haven't prayed and you are certain about your situation wait on the lord please do get the book face your foe on confronting the critics because it is about that time for some of you all to stop turning your back, stop running away, stop making excuses, stop putting people up to doing your dirty work. It's time. God has moved on some of you all. Your stomach starts to hurt, huh? Just thinking about the fact that you got to walk up to someone or you got to drive over to someone's house or you have to be in the presence of someone at an event. We just had this major blow up. Or they heard something that I said. Or someone told them something that's untrue. Now I got to look this person in the face. Some of you all, the reason why God is pushing you toward the face-to-face -face confrontation is because he knows that there is going to be a change in you when you do it. You will stop being so fearful. That's why. For some of you all who ask God, why, 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 God, do I have to confront this person? That's why, because he wants you to stop being so nervous and so fearful and always running around having some type of issue with someone behind their back. But yet you won't speak up. That's why. So for those of you all who are ready, who are willing and who are able, it's time to put on the big girl, the big girl pants, right? It's time to stop with all of the excuse making and face your foe. Please do get the book. Once again, if you need a cheerleader, if you need some support as you are preparing for that face to face confrontation one day. Also, for some of you all, I never, ever advise you confront someone if you know that they are violent. If anything, you want to have a witness. Others, you're going to need law enforcement. And some people, your face-to-face -face confrontation is going to be through legal documents. And then you'll see that person in court one day. But either way, however the confrontation takes place, just so long as there is something that goes on that is going to free you up out of that oppression, out of that captivity, out of being that blind person who can't see. No, God, he frees us. He doesn't bind us. Yes, it's going to feel uncomfortable. Yes, we're going to feel nervous. And yes, we may not want to do something. But you see, sometimes you got to look at all those prayers that you prayed. And sometimes the answer comes through confrontation. Sometimes it comes through the sit down meeting that you really don't want to have. Sometimes it comes through someone coming to you and confronting you. You see, we think that prayer is going to be answered one way and then it shows up in two, three, four different ways and confrontation happens to be part of it. There's been times where I have literally yelled at the top of my lungs, had tears running down my face. But I tell you what, I walked away feeling at peace because no longer did I feel like I had to keep my mouth shut. No longer did I feel like my back was up against the wall. No matter what folks were saying at the time which usually was be quiet and stay in your lane and don't ruffle somebody's feathers. It was not giving me any peace. But that moment when I raised my voice, Lord Jesus, heaven heard. And I'm telling you, I have never been the same since. It's unfortunate that some people, you got to go there. But it happens and confrontation isn't always going to be peaceful and it's not going to always be uh, so dignified and uh, so respectful. Sometimes confrontation is going to bring out some ugly stuff. Sometimes you got to go back down memory lane 
and tell some people about some things they have said and done. And of course, they don't want to hear. That's why they walk away. That's why they yell. That's why they curse. That's why they threaten you. That's why some of them will go so far as to even throw something at you or hit you because they don't want to know the truth. They don't want to see the truth. They don't want to be reminded of how ugly they've been. The Lord showed me this time and time again. He said that he don't and she don't want to hear anything you got to say because they know that they are guilty. And I am working through you to speak the truth to them. So that they can see things for what they really are. And because they won't see, they will suffer the consequences. Some of them, they are no longer in a position where they can touch me, talk to me, or do anything to me. Because the Lord said that they didn't want to hear truth then, and they don't want to hear truth now. And I'm not going to have you waste your time, your energy, or your prayers on people who are children of darkness. He told me this. He pointed those folks out who were ungodly. He showed me those individuals who have been speaking negatively about me for years and have been saying the kind of things to their spouses and to their friends and to their relatives that was not altogether true. But those people who had an ear to hear that type of noise never did get to hear my side because they had already formulated an opinion. And the Lord said, and you don't need them around you. Weaklings are not around people of God on a regular basis. If anything, we teach weaklings. God moves on us to talk to weaklings. Inspire, encourage. But no, they can't sit at the table and talk business. They're not even privy to our business. I know that sounds harsh. I know it sounds cold, but for some of you all, that's what's happening. You got some children of darkness who are not only dark, but they're weak spiritually, mentally, physically. And some of them, they think that it's all about money. It's all about material wealth. That's what makes me strong. That's what makes me better than most people have told me. It doesn't matter what people have said. The point is, is that weak is weak is weak. And when the Lord looks at a person, no matter what material wealth they have as being weak, that's just what they are. And some folks are pointing a finger at everybody else being weak when for decades they've been weak. <laughs> Come on now. Some of you all know some of these people and we get the last laugh. They laughed at us. They talked about us. They called us all sorts of names and thought God wasn't listening. And when God himself calls somebody a fool, when God himself calls somebody weak. Hey, truth is truth. So don't use up your energy dealing with these fools. I'm telling you that after you done already spoke truth and they don't want to receive truth, we cannot keep casting any type of pearls to swine, right? The Bible even says we're not even supposed to cast pearls to swine. It's not even a matter of keep anything. We weren't supposed to be doing it from the door. The Lord knows what our worth is. He knows what our mind is um, made of. He knows what... uh And who we are. So there you have it. Confrontation is right around the corner for some of you all. Like I said, put those big girl, big boy pants on and let's do it. Thank you as always for taking the time out of your busy schedule to listen. You've been listening to YouTube NM Enterprise 7. Please do get my new book, Face Your Foe on Confronting the Critics. Also, if you haven't gotten any of my other books, by all means, they are available around the web. And we do welcome donations. So if you don't find anything of interest as far as the books and some of the other links, then maybe you just might be supportive in giving or sharing this particular message to God be the glory.